They say birds of a feather flock together, but does anyone really know why? For years, certain types of species have been able to work together as a single coherent unit, though they are still separate individuals who are physically capable of moving about on their own. This phenomenon is called swarming. Migratory birds fly seasonally in packs so that each bird can take advantage of a general consensus as to where they should be going. If two birds start to fly in a different direction, the entire flock will choose which one to follow based on the majority. This decision is unconscious and instinctual. Fish swim in a coherent swarm, more commonly known as a school, so that they can take advantage of each other's watchful eyes in case of predators. A single fish has only a limited range of perception, yet if each fish pays attention to their neighbors, they can take advantage of each other's knowledge, which is a much broader understanding of the dangerous world around them. Mormon crickets also gather in massive swarms to most effect effectively escape predators and find food, though their reason for continual movement forward is not only because they are in search of food, but because if food is scarce, they become cannibalistic. To avoid being eaten by one another, the crickets must keep up with those ahead of them so that others behind them don't devour them. Ants are highly developed swarmers, with a successful hierarchy and combined goal to feed the queen and then themselves. For example, when ants need to travel over a distance they cannot reach on their own, they coordinate with one another to build a bridge out of their own bodies. When finished, the entire bridge is deconstructed and any who do not survive are eaten. They work together for an idea that is more important than the individual. They are working to maintain and build a prosperous future. These creatures are so well evolved to swarm because they have been doing it for as long as they have existed. It is their only hope to survive and reproduce. The dictator, also known as a pacemaker, defies the idea of a swarm, for a swarm is a collective group of acting as a single unit, all with a similar objective. All are equal. One has just as much say as any other, so that it may take advantage of the broadest perspective. Recently, though, technology has allowed humans to form ourselves into collectives that act very similar to animal swarms. These collectives are called smart mobs. A smart mob is an organized collective behavior. They are intelligent groupings of individuals who are efficient because they are networked to a range of interconnected devices. These devices that network various individuals enable people to connect to information or connect to one another at any place at any time. This information web can be accessed through the internet, radio, or the telephone using devices such as laptops, Wi-Fi, cell phones, or radio trips. Cellular telephones and wireless internet are allowing people to connect anywhere at any time. This means our own personal range of perception has gone from knowing what is directly around us to having access to everything around everyone who has our telephone number in an instant. This has allowed for massive amounts of people to arrive at a collective action simultaneously all around the world. This has been utilized by star hungry teenage fans, pillow fighters in city parks, and protesters. The simple tools invented to evolve our level of communication are reaching the point of human re revolution. This technology is only a few years old and has already been responsible for acts of obsession, protest, amusement, violence, and much more. This is a successful and powerful trend that won't go out of style, and it is our job to figure out how to do it. At the turn of the century, people were introduced to the gas-burning automobile. At the time, this tool was used on a relatively small scale, and its effects were unheard of. Over 100 years later, don't we all wish our predecessors had considered the horrendous effects these machines had had on all life and the planet on which we live? Would it have saved us a lot of trouble if people at the time had realized that cheaper did not mean better, and to take advantage of alternative energy resources that were also available at the time? and to consider trafficking these vehicles differently to avoid long waits, accidents, and wasted energy. If at the time, designers had looked to other species that effectively traffic hundreds of thousands of themselves to help the car work better for its future, drivers of today might be very different. 
It is our challenge to consider the affordances this technology has created and what they could potentially become so future generations do not have to clean up our mess. We need to figure out what we can do to inform this technology of its consequences and possible solutions before these consequences pan out into disaster. Can we take a cue from nature? From those who have been working together in complex networks for as long as they have lived on this planet? Though these patterns have not been entirely discovered and proven as common trends, there are many working on the subject with these goals in mind.